Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we are looking at the boiling points of various organic molecules. And we're going to compare how their boiling points vary with the length of the chains of the molecules and their functional groups. So we're going to be doing something that scientists always do. We're going to be analyzing data. Let's suppose that somebody had collected this data for us. We've got to see if there are any relationships between all these various numbers. So don't be intimidated. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. And I hope that if you're watching, you're going to shout out the answers. Okay, to keep this as simple as possible, I've got a one carbon chain, two carbon chain, three carbon, four carbon, five carbon, six carbon chain, alkanes first of all, with their various boiling points. So it would be like taking methane, ethane, propane, butane, uh, pentane, hexane, and putting them in a kettle, switching the kettle on, and looking at what temperature it boils. Now you all know what water boiling looks like, and it's not too dissimilar. If you had these in liquid form, what temperatures would they boil at? Now in science, the boiling point is defined as when the vapor pressure, which is if you have a mug full of methane, it wants to jump out of the mug because it's got kinetic energy. And that's, it's like a whole lot of molecules bouncing around. And some of them jump out of the mug and that creates an upward pressure, which is equal at boiling point to the downward pressure of atmosphere. We don't want to spend too long on that. But if you were to take a mug of methane, a one carbon alkane, it would boil at minus 162 degrees centigrade. All of these values are in degrees centigrade. Degrees centigrade. Okay, so at an absolutely freezing temperature, that would start to boil. Minus 88 a two carbon, that's ethane, would start to boil, turn from a liquid into a gas. At minus 45, a three carbon, minus 0 0.5, that's almost zero. A four carbon, that would be butane, would boil. And then the five carbon, which is pentane, would be boiling at 36 degrees centigrade. So if we take room temperature as 20, degrees centigrade as room temperature, would this be a liquid or a gas at room temperature? And the answer is, we've got to heat it by 16 degrees before it will boil. So it's going to be a liquid at room temperature and hexane would be also a liquid and we'd have to heat it even more to get it to boil. So do we get the idea? Now, in science, we call the two things we're investigating our variables. Now, one of them is our independent variable, which we're going to put on the x-axis if we were to draw a graph, and one of them is our dependent variable, and that we're going to put on our vertical or y-axis if we were going to draw a graph. So our independent variable is the one that we manipulate and we change the values of, and then the dependent variable is the one which we have to measure. So if which of those do you think is our independent variable? Which of those ones do we just choose? And which of those do we have to then measure? So our independent variable would be the length of the chain. The so that would go on our x-axis. If we were drawing a little graph, we would put a, a one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon chain, and then our, our dependent variable is the temperature at which it boils, and we would have to put that here on our vertical axis. Okay, so now, once we've de decided on our variables, We've got to ask ourselves, what must we control? So we've got these one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chains. What must we keep the same? Well, is it possible that we could take the chains 
say we've got a chain like this, is it possible that the chain could have branches to it? And that would then become a, a, a variable as well, having some of them chained and some of them not chained. So that is our control. We must try and keep all the molecules in straight chains. And another th thing that we could possibly vary is we could add a, a halogen to it. So we must make sure we don't have any other compounds added to it. So it mustn't be branched, mustn't have anything added to it. Okay, now we ask in our investigative question, what is the, what is the question we're asking by showing this data? Can you think of a, an investigative question? Hmm. What does this seem to be about, this whole taking the chain length and the temperature? Well, isn't it the question, what happens to the temperature as we change the chain length? Right? So that is our investigative question. Now we must come up with a hypothesis. What do we think happens? What do we think? We could be wrong. Happens when we increase the chain length. What happens to the boiling point? Now, is that higher or lower than that? Well, if you had minus 162 Rand in your bank and you had 69 Rand in your bank, which would you prefer? Which is the higher amount? Well, obviously, this is. So look at it. Minus 162, minus 88. What do we take as our hypothesis? Our hypothesis is that the longer the chain length, the higher the boiling point of the alkane. So that would be our, our hypothesis. And that would be our, a good question. Let's do this first of all. So we've, we've decided that as the chain length gets longer, so does the so does the boiling point. Can you think why that is? Why would it be that the longer the chain, the harder it is for those molecules to jump out of the kettle? Well, let's take a long chain with another long chain and notice that if they're a gas, there's nothing that sticks them together. But the moment they're a liquid, there's like a fuzziness around the chains. The fur, you could say, on the chains helps to hold these strands of wool together. So, do you think that if you have a long piece of wool and it's got the fuzziness, which in this case is, high, is um, van der Waals forces, and in particular London or dispersion forces, Look how there's a big surface area for the molecule. So there's a lot of surface area for those London or dispersion forces to act. And so it's going to, if you have a whole lot of these molecules bundled up, it's going to be hard for them to untangle themselves from each other and to be heated as you heat it for them to jump out of the cup and evaporate because of the large surface area of the molecule. Whereas if we took something like this, a small chain of molecules, look, they've only got a little length. There's not much area where the two molecules can attach. So they're going to be less firmly attached. And therefore, when we heat them, they're going to be able to separate from each other reasonably easily. So short chain, Low boiling point, little energy needed for them to jump and out of the kettle as it boils. Long chain, all tangled up, lots of van der Waal forces, London forces, and so they've all that this molecule's got to tear itself away. This one's got to tear itself away from the others, and so the longer the chain, the greater the intermolecular forces. The London forces, and therefore the higher the boiling point. And the same thing applies to viscosity. The longer the chain, the hard, thicker the liquid will be. The, it will pour more slowly. It'd be like thick oil or treacle or honey. Now, let's see if you can 
figure out something here. Alcohols. Look at that. How do they compare with alkanes, their boiling points? Minus 162, 65. Minus 88, a two-chain alcohol, ethanol, 78 degrees. That's, that's high. That's the normal drinking alcohol. A three-carbon alkane, minus 45. Look at propanol, three-carbon alcohol, 97, almost the boiling point of water. So if I were to ask you to compare the two alkanes with alcohols, which has got the higher boiling point? And it is by far the alcohols than the alkanes. And the reason is alcohols have got, if I were to take, here's your alcohol, methane, ethanol, it's got an oxygen with a hydrogen and it forms strong hydrogen bonds with, say, another oxygen and a hydrogen. So it forms these hydrogen bonds and it's, the hydrogen bonds are very strong. It's hard to tear them apart. So alcohols, because of this oxygen with a hydrogen, form a very strong bond to each other, and therefore they stick together like strong glue, and therefore it's hard to shake them apart. We've got to boil them at a very high temperature before they will leave the kettle high boiling points. Okay, carboxylic acids. Now those are the things that end in C, which is this pink marshmallow, double bond O, OH. So this is a carboxylic acid. Look, it's got two oxygens, both of which can form hydrogen bonds. So what happens if you've got now molecules with not just one hydrogen bond, two hydrogen bonds on the ends of the molecule? Look what happens to the boiling point. A one carbon methanoic acid, 100 degrees it boils at. Ethanoic, 118. Look at that hexanoic acid, 205 degrees. So look how the presence of two lots of hydrogen bonds has raised the boiling point. Now, here are ketones and aldehydes. They have similar boiling points. Now, they look like this. Here is a ketone. Propanone. It's got an oxygen sitting in the middle of a chain of three molecules. So there is an oxygen. It does not form hydrogen bonds, but it does form dipole. Dipole bonds, which slightly raises the boiling point. Slightly stronger than Van der Waals, um, London forces. Now look how these ketones, with an oxygen, which raises the boiling point, look at their temperature compared to that. Ketones versus alkanes, much higher boiling point. And then let's go to the fluoroalkanes. What happens if we take an alkane? Here's an alkane, methane, with its one, two, three, four matchsticks. And what would happen if we added a fluorine to it? See, I've written fluorine on here. So we have... Methane, take away hydrogen, add fluorine, look what happens to the boiling point. The addition of a halogen changes the boiling point from minus 162 to minus 78. Much higher boiling point. And look at all of them. Minus 88, minus 37. So what's the relationship? When you add a halogen, it creates a dipole-dipole attraction. Because your halogen attracts the electrons, a negative charge here, positive charge here, and that's what sticks these molecules together, negative to positive, negative to positive. So, there are, so we see then that the alkanes, very low boiling point, add a halogen, raises the boiling point, add an OH, raises the boiling point still more, add an OH and a double bond O, still further raises the boiling point, and if we just have an O somewhere in the molecule, it raises it above the alkane level.